the team sh- that they're working with, it's a day. Oh, Todd, it's a data team. So they don't always have something tangible or usable by the end of a sprint. Lots of back end work that's not usable. Is this okay in Scrum? First, first and foremost, you don't need our permission to do something. <laughs> Right. So when we say okay or not, I think we're going to shift it to what could we try to do in this situation? Look, Todd and I have both worked with data teams. Let's face it, Todd, you're a data nerd. And I love it because he's always got these great insights about our business, about our students. But even when he's building the infrastructure for this reporting stuff that he does, which is it's extensive, it's awesome. He's got EBM running in the background for our company. So evidence-based management is something we leverage. But even when he's building out the architecture for this and the models, he's always got at least one piece of data that pops up, right? He's always got something, hey, Ryan, check out this new report. It's not, some of the backend stuff is missing, but this is what it's gonna be. And I get all excited and I start like, yeah, and he's, he goes off and continues. And But there's always something. And I think it comes back to components and features. If you have a data science team that's just building the data model and that's what we're delivering, then that's hard to see in a sprint review. But if you have a team who's like, all right, we know this data model is coming and we know that this is what the report's going to look like. And we're going to we're going to maybe fake a few pieces here, but we're going to use the model there and we're going to start. I think that's when we get out of this mode of we can't do Scrum because we're all back. No, there, there's something that's important to a user. And when we start looking for those slices of things that are important, I think better outcomes can happen. What do you think, Todd? Oh, let me give an example of a team, a data team. So I was working with a company that had seven, seven, seven different inventory databases and the idea, and they had no holistic view of anything on the bottom of it. And so the idea was to create a data repository that they could search and you could find common things and understand how to manage inventory better across the company. And I really pressed upon the team that in the first sprint, they need to deliver something done. And they might have built the ugliest web page I've ever seen, right? But it showed data on it coming from two different databases. And during the sprint review, one of the stakeholders that was connected remotely said, how in the world did you get that data all on the same? It takes me days, if not weeks, to get that in the same spreadsheet and compare it. And you got that, clicked a button and it's there. And then by the way, I just updated something here and you clicked refresh and it's there. How do I get that? And the next sprint became about finding a way to easily get that to that stakeholder because of how much it improved their ability to look across those two databases. And to your point, Ryan, sometimes these visual components for us to be able to interpolate and understand what's happening with that data allows our stakeholders when they come into a sprint review to ask questions. And maybe it's about the validity of something. Maybe it's just a quick study that we're doing, but some kind of is some kind of conversation enabler with stakeholders. And that, that was really a powerful moment to me. And especially because it was like the first sprint and they had never worked in any of the tooling and they had never used Scrum before. So it was like, a we delivered an increment in the very first sprint with all these things going against us. And by the way, it was something usable to a stakeholder that in the next sprint we delivered. So it was pretty awesome. Nice. Great question. Todd, thanks for that story. I think that's really helpful.